All right, Coach Stacy, I think that we are live. Hi, guys. How you doing, Diet Disruptors? Um, so usually, Carrie joins you um, at 1130 on Mondays. But this week, Carrie is traveling. So Stacy and I have the uh, pleasure of joining you today um, to talk about this week's topic. Um, I am Coach Deb. I am one of the certified health and nutrition coaches with Disruptive Nutrition. And I'm really excited to be with my partner here, Coach Stacy. You and I have never done a live together. This is really fun for me. Hi. <laughs> yeah, my first one. Woo! Okay. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> So that's so I'm Coach Stacy. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go, 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 go. See, this is what happens when you don't work together all that often. All right, go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Coach Stacy, and I um, am. My background's a little bit different. It, with it's with a, I'm a nutritional therapist. So I got my degree with nutritional therapy a couple of years ago, just because uh, just was something I was really interested in. I'm a teacher, you know, by day, but I was like, oh, I'm really interested in nutrition and how I can help other people figure out, you know, how to eat better and that too. So that's why for me, it just was just trying to get up there and try to help others mostly. I mean, that's, that's me. I'm, I'm a helper. So yeah. <laughs> no, she is a helper. And the other thing is too, this is, she's actually a great person to partner with me today to talk about the topic that we're going to talk about. But before we get to today's topic, coach Stacy wants to tell you one more thing about an exciting upcoming we have that you're going to want to get your yeah. hands right we have our recipe offer coming soon so right now you can get your name on the waiting list which is awesome um you get a couple free recipes right to um be to get you going a little bit to get you excited about it so i think we're going to post below the link to have uh your name put on the waiting list to get our recipe subscription and there are some fabulous recipes there you'll love them they are and not only are they this is really the only place that you're going to be able to find pfc balanced recipes you know we eat a protein a fat and a carbohydrate every three hours um so if you're new to us that's kind of a little bit about us um, but if you've been with us for a while, this is a great way to sort of dip your toes in the PFC waters, um, because these, all of these recipes are balanced and you can't find that anywhere else other than our recipe subscriptions. So make sure that you get your name on that list. Um, and we will post the link below when we're done. Yeah. Okay. Great. Which brings me to our topic for today, which is actually a really important topic. It can also sometimes be a controversial topic. And that topic is to organic or not to organic. So I know, right? Exactly. It makes you feel like very, <laughs> very cerebral when you ask those things. And both of us being teachers, right? It's like, you know, I'm an, an English teacher. So, um, so when we think about organic, right? We want to think about, of course, we're always thinking about like, how can we best spend our money? Where can we best spend our pennies? Is organic worth the price, right? And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. We're also going to talk about um, the dirty dozen. And if you are going to spend money, what are the uh, food groups or food items that you really want to make sure that you have um, that is organic? But I want to talk a little bit, or I want to start by talking off, uh, talking a little bit about like how we actually started using pesticides. Um, and we started using pesticides after World War II. So we, of course, you know, used chemical warfare during World War II. And they noticed that, you know, it was killing bugs as well. So farmers in the 1950s started using, in order to preserve their crops, they started using pesticides in order to kill the bugs so that they could, um, you know, protect their crops and sell their crops because, uh, you know, that's what they, that's what they want to do, get their crops to market. But it yeah. wasn't until later, much later, almost 20 years later, where they realized the harmful side effects or started to realize the harmful side effects of using some of those pesticides. Um, and they actually realized that it was more harmful. Um, so they, they changed some of the pesticides that they were using, but pesticides are still used today. And it's now, it's now a known carcinogen. So it's definitely something that we want to stay away from as much as we and, can, if possible. Yeah. And there, I mean, you could find that 90% of the population finds traces of pesticides in their body. You just can't help it. But the more you can try to stay away from it, the better, right? Yeah. Oh. And if you can make smart choices 
And if you can make the choices of, okay, what are the items that I have to buy organic, right? So here are the items that, and I'm going to read off of a different screen because I want to make sure I get them all. And this list is constantly changing, but this is the most updated list um, that, that Coach Stacy and I found out there. So number one, if you're going to buy something that's organic, the, first, the number one top worst offender is strawberries. Think of how many times like you've eaten strawberries, right? And they use pesticides in order to kill um, the, the bugs that are there. But if you buy organic strawberries, that is, so if you're going to buy organic, buy organic strawberries. Um, spinach is another one. Um, kale, collard greens, mustard greens, nectarines, apples, grapes. And part of the reason that we, um, that many of our, the coaches are also, um, you know, that we talk so much about clean crafted wine um, is because grapes are part of the dirty dozen. So when you're drinking conventional wine, you are ingesting pesticides and there's also added sugars and things like that. And remember, we're like thinking about being as clean and healthy as we possibly can be. Cherries, peaches, pears, bell peppers, right? So it's really important if you're going to spend the money to spend the money on bell peppers, celery and tomatoes, so those are what they would consider like the dirty dozen. If you are going to buy something organic, those are the ones you most certainly want to buy organic just because they can absorb the pesticides. Their skin is so thin. So it absorbs the pesticides and then you end up ingesting the pesticides into your body. Right. Yep. Stacey, you had talked a little bit about a farmer's market. So talk a little bit about what had happened at the farmer's market that you were at recently. Yeah, you have to make sure when you even, I mean, farmer's markets, you think totally natural, you know, they're going to have the best products. It, it's true. They, they do. There's not as much, you know, they're not shipping it. You're not getting all those, the extra, you know, things there, but you got to remember to ask them when you walk up, do you spray? I mean, my husband always makes sure if we ever go to farmer's markets and we ask them, do you spray your crops? Because some of them will still spray and you're still getting those pesticides sides in your system. So even when you go to a farmer's market or you go someplace where you see, you know, on the side of the road, ask them, walk up to the door and ask them that if there's don't, no shame in that, right? You want to make yeah. sure that you're getting the best quality that you can, because sometimes you're paying more, sometimes you're paying a little bit less. You don't know, right? So. Yep. And, and there are items, like I said, that are worth paying the extra money for just because then you know that you're getting clean ingredients. Now, right. One of our, we, we have a couple, not probably a couple, probably many diet disruptors who live in more rural areas. And it is expensive for a farm to become certified organic. So actually one of our diet disruptors had actually made the, um, had made the point that some air, some farmers in rural areas, because they can't afford to get become certified organic, they still have organic, they still use organic um, farming practices. So if you live in more rural areas, look for those people who are using organic farming practices, but who might not necessarily be able to become certified organic. So that's um, an important thing to talk about also. Stacy, what happened when you went to the grocery store the other day? <laughs> this is yeah, sort of so debunking a myth. Yeah, right. Uh, you really have to check. I know that people believe that, that organic is more expensive than conventional. It's not always. If you walk around and you price check and you look at things, you'll find I was actually in the dressing aisle the other day. I had to make something for teacher appreciation luncheon I was making and I was looking for a nice dressing to put on top of what I was making. I saw a lime vinaigrette and a lemon vinaigrette. Well, the lime vinaigrette was not organic. The lemon was. And there was a 50 cent difference. And the one that was cheaper was organic. So you never know. And same thing happened to me years ago. I was looking at a, a vegetable. I think it was avocados, which you don't always have to buy organic. But I found avocados that were organic that were cheaper than the non-organic. So no brainer, even though they're on the clean 15 and you don't have to buy avocados organic, why would I not if I'm getting them cheaper, right? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I mean, you know that farmers like you said that sometimes they can't get that organic stamp on everything because of you know what the hump the hoops they make them jump through just to get these things on there right yep so organic is not always more expensive so you really have to like check 
and do your, you know, price checking around. I know sometimes you just want to get in, out of the grocery store, but isn't it worth it for your family and isn't it worth it for you and your body, <laughs> right? No, most definitely. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I find too that when I, when, if I go to Whole Foods that they have the organic um, produce on sale and you can get it on sale if you're an Amazon Prime member. So sometimes they'll have, uh, you know, specials on organic strawberries and that's when I'm like stocking up on organic strawberries. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. And then we're having strawberries for days and that's fine. <laughs> um, but always check. I mean, definitely check because they do put organic produce on sale from time to time. Um, and like I said, you know, sometimes you can get your Amazon discount. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Right. No, even uh, frozen. Like we buy, yeah. we buy frozen um, strawberries. We buy frozen broccoli. I throw frozen broccoli in my shake or frozen spinach in my shake in the morning because do you really get vegetables in your breakfast most of the time? I mean, breakfast mm -hmm. is usually not a vegetable thing, right? So yep. I always try to make sure I put a little bit of vegetable in mine just to get those extra vegetables in me, you know? Um, and, and I'll have to tell you, when you have frozen broccoli or spinach, you cannot taste it. It's not like throwing fresh in there. If you throw fresh broccoli in your shake, it's not You're good. Gonna yeah <laughs> they'll taste, taste it good. no most like, definitely but, for you but it doesn't taste good <laughs> right but you're upping the nutrition there and that's always important and that's actually a right. really good point that you made is that sometimes if you buy you know sometimes we're worried about oh if i buy the organic produce it might go bad but the other thing you can do is you can buy it frozen and like you said if you're putting it into shakes if you're doing it as stir fry um if you're you know putting it into one of our recipes like that would be a really great thing to do would be to use the uh frozen vegetables so that's that's yeah. important now, we always talk about organic foods as being really good for our bodies and better for our bodies. But Stacey, you have done a little bit of research on this and you've actually found out found some information about how organic farming practices actually helps the soil also. So talk a little bit about what you found. Yeah, well, just, just knowing that spending some money on um, organic foods really helps to keep our future sustainable, right? We're gonna have a more sustainable future. Um, cause right now it's only 5% of the purchases that are, uh, accounts for organic right now. So it's kind of sad, right? Yeah. But when you're talking about like, you hear the word GMO, right? Everyone knows what GMO is, right? Genetically modified. Well, um, organic farmers can't plant with any GMO seeds. They're not allowed to use any GMO seeds in any of their things. So that right there makes you feel better. Yep. Um, also the cows can't be given any GMO alfalfa or corn. So organic cows are not allowed to be given any of that. So they should um, be free of that stuff. And then there's no GMO ingredients in any organic products as well. Organic animals are, um, aren't fattened up with any of those growth hormones as well. So, you know, like you pretty much know that when you're buying organic, that it's going to be higher quality, better for your body, less pesticides. I mean, they're feeding the animals and the plant, they're planting the seeds with things that, you know, we want to make sure we don't have in us. Yep keep it clean, right? Yeah, exactly. And you know what, what you just mentioned there about animals, they taught, uh, Carrie and Coach Shannon talked a little bit about that when they talked about dairy and making sure that it's not just organic, but also grass fed. So making sure there is a difference because, you know, there's certain, um, you know, we, all, we also talk about the difference between like organic and biodynamic. Right. And there are certain things that people who are farming bigger farms can get away with when they have the organic seal. But if you're, you know, organic and biodynamic, you're not only doing good by the customer, but also doing good by the land because you have to leave the land better than how you found it. So it's really important to do the research and look for, you know, labels and, and things like that. I'm sorry, go. What were you going to say? Oh, no, no, no. Um, you can even find like in your neighborhood, look around and see if there are any far farmers around you too. Like we have a who is a, um, a dairy farmer and mm -hmm. we go there and we get some meat, organic meats there from him. We get some organic milk from him. We get organic yogurt from him. I mean, it's, you got to kind of look around. You, you never know that someone around the corner from you might have that. And you just don't, you haven't tapped into that yet, you know? So yes. No, it's true. I have a farm that's around near the around the corner for me and they are free range chickens. They are grass fed beef. I mean, it is like I, I, you've I've watched them develop this farm over the past six months. And it's actually been really cool to watch them, you know, acquire all of these animals. But you can just tell that, you know, the, the animals are well taken care of. They're roaming out in the pasture um, and they're doing right by the animals. But also, you know, it would be a place that I would go and get um, meat from. And I actually live in an area where there's a lot of different farms, different farm stands, farmers markets. Um, so definitely, like Stacy said, ask the questions when you go 
and see, you know, do you spray? And if they don't, or do you use organic practices? Um, they might not be able to become certified organic. However, it is something that is, you know, that, that they can still be using those practices even if they don't have that stamp. Um, here's what I want you guys to do though really quickly. I want you to type into the chat something about organic. Either you eat organic, you're still like a little not, you're not sure about organic um, because this is still a, con you know, this is a conversation that of course can be continued um, because I think it's sort of important for all of us to kind of think about, you know, what are those items that we are going to choose to be organic? And if there's anything that you're going to spend your money on, as far as organic goes, make sure that it's the strawberries, the spinach, the kale, the nectarines, all of those um, fruits that have uh, really thin skin on the outside because, you know, you don't want to put any more pesticides into your body than you already, I mean, we, like, like Stacy said, there's pesticides everywhere, you know, around it, where we are and we have them in our body. We have there, toxins in our body too. There's a lot of um, studies out there. You can research it yourself to find that a lot of these pesticides are linked with cancer nowadays. So, you know, you, you find in, uh, more and more family members coming down with things. So, you just want to be as good as you can for yourself and the environment, you know, putting, you know, all this toxic sludge you hear is going into, the, into our groundwater from, you know, the conventional way that they do things and produce things, you know, with organic, there's no chemicals leached into the ground. There's, you know, greater biodiversity. It's just, the earth is going to be happier for us and we'll have it around a lot longer if we take care of it, right? We take care yep. of our body. Well. And also if we're taking care of our bodies too, right? Yep. So Taking care of our bodies is number one, right? First and foremost, taking care of ourselves, taking care of our families, making the right choices for ourselves and our families, but also thinking about the future and thinking about like how we want to leave this planet and the choices that we make just by the things that we, um, you know, what the choices that we make in the grocery store, if we all start making choices in the grocery store that, you know, are one way or another way, it forces people and corporations to change their practices. So just by- yeah. Uh, sure. Just by buying, you can make, you know, you can make a statement. Yeah, you don't think about that. But when you do, when you buy things, it's, it's setting off flags in other places to show what people are doing and how they're doing it. Like, really, it's great to be able to, to, to have a part of that that you don't know. So, yeah. oh, <laughs> Well, Stacey, I have so enjoyed talking with you today and we've enjoyed being here. Um, Carrie will be back next week. Um, you know, she, she was traveling this week, but she'll be back next week. Make sure though, that you click on the link, which we will put in the chat as soon as we're done here for the recipe subscription. It's going to, you know, it'll come out and you want to get on the waiting list, but you can also get free recipes now. And like I said at the beginning, these recipes are unlike anything you can find because all of them are PFC balanced. So there are not recipes that are PFC balanced. You can do that yourself, but we do all of the guesswork and all of the math and everything for you mm -hmm. to make sure that these are PFC balanced. Now, the other thing I will tell you is these recipes have been kid approved, right? We have, the coaches have kids from, you know, young kids all the way up through teenagers. So if we have young kids and teenagers liking this, you know that even the pickiest eaters are going to be uh, enjoying the recipes. That's so right. any last thoughts or last words, Coach Cece? Yeah, I want to tell you too, if you print out that clean 15 and dirty dozen list, I carry mine in my purse. I take it with me to the grocery store because, you know, sometimes you might not remember everything. Take it with you and then you'll know when you're there. Oh, wait, was that the one again? You know, so and sometimes they change from year to year. You never know. One year, something is cleaner than others. So you never know what's going to be on it. So yep. it's a good little tip just to have it with you. That is a good tip. No, very good tip. It has been a pleasure. Make sure that you say hello to us down in the comments. I didn't say that at the beginning. Hello, everybody. So make sure that you <laughs> say hello back to us. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. And it was a pleasure being with you. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you.